Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this video on trading complex pullbacks using supply and demand zones. Now, what is a complex pullback? A complex pullback is uh, what the market does when it wants to um, uh, fool traders and capture traders into uh, taking certain trading pretty much gets them twice. So you can probably see on the thumbnail um, what happens. I'm going to explain what the, uh, you know, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I uh, movement is all about. Now, um, if you're a support and resistance trader, you normally will get caught out by what is known as the complex pullback. And um, this is because uh, support and resistance traders and support and resistance levels um, when you're trading them, it's simply just a pattern and really doesn't take into account or rarely takes into account. People don't really think about um, value, right? So what traders will look at is just a pattern. So they will see, you know, a higher high take place. And then what they will do is they will trade and look for some price action when price comes down into what was, uh, you know, previous what they call resistance, which is really just a supply zone that has been projected into the future right and then take that as support right and their confluence is some sort of candlestick or you know indicator right so but what we know as uh, supply and demand traders is that and you can watch this on my introduction into supply and demand um i'll put the link in the description box below right is that higher highs and higher lows well especially higher lows are where the cheapest area right is where the strongest area um, of demand is because this is a cheap zone. It's considered the first cheapest area, right, from a move up. And again, if you want to know what I'm, you know, talking about, the link is in the description box below or up on the top right hand side of your screen, right? So, what happens is if we have, if you turn this into, um, you know, turn that into an A, and then actually, matter of fact, let's just go back a bit, right? So. First of all, we get our move up A, then we get a pullback B, then we get C, right? So remember, B is what we would consider the best area, right? The best area for demand, right? And this would be what we would call supply. Now, this if this is the cheapest area, if this is cheap, right? E, A, P, right? This has to be an expensive area, right? X, E, X. Right, and in between a uh, a cheap area and an expensive area is fair value. Right, so this would be considered fair value. So when traders tend to buy at areas of uh, support and resistance between a high and a low, what you're really doing is buying at fair value. Or if you're buying at you know Fibonacci retracement 38.2, you're buying above fair value. And if you're buying at the 618 retracement, you're buying just below fair value, right? Supply, um, sorry, support and resistance traders, like I said, don't are just trading the pattern. They're not understanding the psychology as to why this move you know, um, occurred, right? And what could potentially happen in the future and the psychology behind, um, you know, demand and supply zones, right? So again, I urge you to watch the introduction into, into supply and demand videos and you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So what happens is, is you get this move ABC up, right? Then you get a move down D. Now, again, we know that this isn't the greatest area to buy, right? Even though prices could still continue to move higher, right? And it could still keep going higher and break to new highs, etc. right? But that doesn't mean it was always the best place to buy, right? And what we're trying to do is avoid, what, um, you know, this uh, complex pullback, which tends to get um, and trick traders um, at least twice, sometimes even three times into, you know, losing, losing trades. So as a support and resistance trader, you're looking at the past and you're seeing this is, you know, A, right project into the future and you want to be a buy here you get some price action and then you put your stop below d right and what ends up happening is is that you get some bullish price action prices might you know go up for a little bit and then what happens is you get stopped out right so you get a b c d and this becomes e right so at e you're feeling a bit positive but then what happens is prices stop you out and f 
happens, right? You're effed. So, um, but this was really B, right? Or this demand zone was was really the the the, the best place to look for a trade. It's the cheapest area to look for a trade when we're trading supply and demand, right? Um, and what tends to happen is is that you know you might get a bounce here. And you get a bounce here, obviously, with some price action and the supply and demand traders and demand traders in this um, example, we look for obviously some price action and then look to buy at the cheapest potential area, right? Now, what happens with support and resistance traders is that they will then look at price action. So they will look at C, D, E, right? Lose on D with their stop loss below here, right? And then look to F and then what they will do, again, just project that potential demand into the future, right? So broken uh, um, support now should become resistance, right? Prices come up to this area and then they get some confirming price action, right? And you know what's gonna happen next, innit, right? You get, so this is G, right? Prices end up taking out their stop losses, right? H and then we end up moving to I right and so traders who trade tend to trade um you know support and resistance will end up losing you know twice and um which is the reason why is, is one of the reasons why um support and resistance traders find it very very hard to continually make profits because they don't you know for one um you know, you're just looking at the technicals. I personally look at fundamentals as my North Star, right? So I know which way I should be trading, right? And if you're looking at technical patterns, you, you don't really know where value really lies, right? When you're trading support and resistance. It's obvious that this was a strong area of demand, right? And this is the cheapest area. And simply because if you, um, you know, you can see price, break into new highs. If this wasn't a strong area of demand, prices would probably get to somewhere around here and here and here and wouldn't move higher. But obviously prices are broken higher because buyers still deem this as a, 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 a you know an area to buy, right? A cheap area because we're always concerned, right, with price. Right? We should always be looking at price and where price is so if we're looking at this area being the absolute bargain area this is where people were loading up right they were buying in there you know hundreds thousands whatever it is that they're buying right so much so that it pushed price past this expensive area what was considered an expensive area right so this has to be an absolute bargain providing that the fundamentals and whatever it is that you're buying right is still you know um fundamentally sound right so which is the reason why you get um this type of of pattern right and uh, there's another reason you know obviously uh, stop hunts occur stop hunts do occur and um i'll get into that in another video right as to the reasons why stop hunts occur um but this um really is how to really avoid uh what you would consider um complex pullbacks and really how we trade complex pullbacks as you know supply and demand traders is really just think about where it is that you're trying to buy right you need an edge right and support and resistance um is not an edge because everybody that 99.9 .9 percent of traders are trading um support and resistance so how is that an edge it's obvious for everybody to see right so what you need to do is really try to look at the chart from a yes from a uh, technical perspective but also from a psychological perspective right and see exactly where the best places you should be buying if prices do go higher from here right fine brilliant right excellent um and good luck to those uh you know support and resistance traders but as a supply and demand trader i'm looking at below fair value as an area to buy so um Let's get into a uh, an example of this on a price chart. 
So here we're on the daily chart of the dollar Swiss franc. Now we have some supply and demand zones drawn out on the daily. And if you want to um, subscribe to our email list, the link is in the description box below when you get these um, these levels sent out to you every week, right? And uh, I also do my Sunday um, trade opportunities where I go over um, levels of new levels of supply and demand. But let's get into the complex pullback. So what we want to do is look for complex pullbacks in daily levels of supply and demand on a lower time frame right so if we go down to let's say a four hour chart and we can see one here right and in real time by the way this was what we saw so um i had marked this level out as a level of um demand because we had made a higher high right so higher low and higher high, right? So what at the time, right, I had projected this level as a level of demand. So this isn't based on, you know, some sort of uh, hindsight or anything like that. This, if you go back to um, that week in March, right, and you can watch the videos in March, March the 20th, right, you'll see that I uh, put this uh, this level on here, but anyway, getting back to the uh, the levels so let's go down into uh, it was this area here wasn't it right so four hour chart right there we go so what support and resistance traders will look to is probably this area right here so you've got resistance 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 and then you've got support right so what we had is a move up, right? Move down, move up. There's our A, B, C. We come down to D, and again, if we if this is all we were looking at, in real time you would have seen a nice pin bar candle, another candle right here. This is like a you know a little swing area. People are looking to the left um, and seeing that. You know, um, you know, there's some sort of confluence here. Prices were rejected there, rejected there, etc. Right. So in real time, this would have looked like a great area to buy. But we know, as supply and demand traders, that the best area to buy, right, the cheapest area, the first cheapest area, is going to be within this daily demand zone. Right. So you have. Um, traders actually buying, so this would be A, B, C, D, right? Traders buying at D, and then what happens is you get move up, this is E, right? And then traders get stopped out as they put their stop losses where in obvious places below here. Traders are not going to put their, you know, use risk rewards, um, you know, and, and try and go anything below this swing here because look, if even, even if they're trying to take profit at the top, that's just an inverse risk reward, so they're going to. Retail traders tend to have as tight a stop as possible, right? To try and get as much pips and um, the risk reward ratio, right? Makes sense. But once they're in, their stop loss is fair game, and now they've lost, right? So now we end up E at F, right? Now, before we come down here, what you're starting to see is lower highs and lower lows being made right lower highs and lower lows being made what does that say to a, a support and resistance trader right it says that you know potentially the end of a you know um the uptrend and now a downtrend is coming right where do you think they're going to try and get short anywhere back into this you know this this uh previously you know sought as uh, support now into resistance where are we buying we're buying at the best areas which is here which is a cheap area right so this could have been our entry right positive candle right or if you trade in you know in the one hour or whatever it is you're trading on right but so we're buying in this zone right because we know this is the cheapest area this was probably fair value not necessarily the best area to buy even though again i just reiterate that prices can take off and go from here but it's really just understanding that when you're trading support and resistance zones you're not necessarily always buying at the best areas right so what happens is traders have got stopped out here and now thinking to themselves all right now is my opportunity to try and get short 
So prices come back up into you know areas where they want to get short. Some traders would have got caught here, putting their stop losses too tight, and then you see you know prices come up, come up, and then you see a nice uh, you know negative pin bar. Brilliant, right? This is probably some you know um, six one eight uh, retracement as well, and they're looking at trying to get short, right? How many people in real time out there watching this video would have looked said that that looked like a good trade to the downside? A lot of people putting your stops above the highs, right? Now, as soon as you've done that, then you get stopped out again and prices go on their merry way, right? And again, we can project into the future and this is a time when, you know, support and resistance, right? Did work, right, here. Right, but if you're if you want to really trade high probability trades and really trade with an extra edge on your um you know on your side, right? What you need to be looking at is supply and demand zones and not get caught up into every support turns resistance, resistance turns into support. Um, because you know, again, if it was that easy, if it really was that easy, you could, you know, you can learn support and resistance in, in a day or two, just getting, you know, just getting practice. There's a reason why traders, right, or there's a lot of reasons why traders, you know, are not successful at support and resistance trading when using technical analysis alone as well, right? So, um, that's just to you know iterate a, a a point right and again actually matter of fact we can see it right here again right we've got another one where you have higher lows and higher highs being made right new high where are traders looking to trade right they're looking to trade at levels of support and resistance we know that this area here right would have been the daily uh you know demand zone that we were looking for prices to come back into before we before we look for a trade right but supply um, support and resistance traders would have been looking at areas right of potential support um sorry i'll talk about supply and demand we're looking at and uh support and resistance traders are looking at areas of support and resistance to obviously get long, right? So they get, end up, prices end up breaking this area here and then where traders trying to get short, right? Right here. Traders trying to get short right here, right? Now, depending on where you got in, you could have made some profit, but was this really the best trade to take? You know, traders were definitely taking this short here, right? Because the more a level is touched as well, which we don't believe is, Sub, um, supply and demand traders, support and resistance traders believe that this area was touched once, twice, three times. The stronger it becomes, it's like some sort of triple top, etc. Right now, we believe the opposite. The more times the level is touched, the uh, the weaker it becomes. Right, so there would have been a lot of stops around here, anywhere above here. Right, stop losses, stop losses. Sorry, got the uh, magnet tool on. Right, but we only take one trade right this is the best area because this is the cheap this is where in the overall trend this is where the cheapest area the first cheapest area is demand area right we're looking to take trades around here stop below our demand zones right um opportunities here opportunities here right and then we end up getting you know the move higher right so that's again just to illustrate the point and how to really trade complex pullbacks and really where you're, uh, where you should be looking at trading, right? Again, fair value is fair value is not always the best area to trade. Best areas to trade are at supply and demand zones because you have a psychological edge. This is where traders in the past thought that this was a bargain, right? And it's, you know, there's, there's a, there's a strong, um, uh, chance that again, traders who bought here, will be buying again down here, right? Um, if prices do come down here and providing that the uh, asset that they're buying 
you know, in this case, the dollar, um, they're buying the dollar over the Swiss is fundamentally sound as well. So I hope that has helped. If you have any questions, um, just email me at info at trading180.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, again, if you wanna sign up to the supply and demand daily levels, there's a link in the description box below. Um, I hope you have a great trading week and take care. So if you'd like to receive the best supply and demand Forex levels absolutely free, click on the link in the description box below, enter your email address, and we'll send you the levels that we have just analyzed in this video. You'll get all of the major Forex currency pairs, and you'll get regular updates and never miss a Forex trading opportunity.